we are talking about procrastination and uh, I, it, it's funny that we all, no matter how good we are, no matter how productive we are, we go up and down in, in, in productivity because of procrastination. So um, today is, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to condense it. Believe it or not, it's uh, when I did overcome procrastination, yeah. it was one of the very first uh, courses that I put together online. So I'm going to try in, in this hour to give you as much information as I can uh, about procrastination. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. If we run long, it's okay with my wife if I solve this problem today. I'm just... <laughs> I bet she does. <laughs> it's like, honey, do this. <laughs> Okay, and let me get my glasses so I can see. And as you know, when I have a full screen, I cannot see you, but I will see if you put something in the chat and I'll try as much as I can to come back to that. You will know why later on in the presentation today, why I have a frog picture when I'm talking about procrastination. So that being said, we know that we're all in this unprecedented time of COVID-19. We have never seen anything like that before. I mean, before, even in our normal life, we all procrastinated to certain degrees, more or less. But with COVID-19, because of the shock that was thrown to us, we found ourselves going into our primal brain where we are just looking for survival and everything that we were doing kind of came to a halt. Like I remember when we first went into shelter in, I was like, oh my God, everything is doing gloom. And, um, can we mute ourselves, please? Thank you. So everything is doom and gloom, and everything is like the, the sky is gonna fall, and all the contracts that they have got canceled. And, and all of a sudden, I, I, I kicked myself into that survival mode where all what I cared about is, is just to survive, basically. So it was including preserving my energy and my brain power. So I started procrastinating, procrastinating for the first week. I kept saying, you know what? This is not going to end till probably everybody is saying till the fall. So I don't have to worry. I have so much time coming that I can do whatever I want to do. And obviously, after a week or two, my, my, my analytical brain started to get in and kick in. And he said, mm, maybe not really, you know, because looking at other places in the world and how... They, they got like back to normal in two, three months. I'm like, no, that's not really the same. And, and I kept going back and forth. And then I decided, you know what, let me put it in high gear and see what happens. So not only that we procrastinate all the time, you know, in normal time, but also COVID-19 or coronavirus just pushed us even for a more reason on why, um, on why to even you know, go into procrastination. So let's start about what is procrastination. And as, you, as most of you know me, I always go through the part where uh, I need to get to the root of the issue, not the symptoms. You know, I need to know why something is happening and this is the only way I can find a solution for it. So let's, let's start by defining what is procrastination. The word procrastination actually is a Latin word. So in the dictionary, it's called procrastinationem, and it means putting off something from day to day. And, and this is like we say, I still have tomorrow, no problem. But what it really means in, in very plain words is that we try to sweep something under the rug. And we hope that it's gonna go on its own. Like we need, we know that we need to have a conversation and a difficult conversation with someone either at work or in the family, but we say, you know what, I'm not, I don't feel like it right now. It's gonna be difficult and I don't wanna put myself in that position now. So let me leave it till maybe tomorrow when I feel better. And then tomorrow becomes after tomorrow, after tomorrow becomes a week, becomes a month and sometimes we never do it. So we think that when we are gonna postpone something or push it till tomorrow, it's gonna go away on its own. But we all know that it doesn't happen that way. And we all know that because it festers in the dark like a cancer cell, what happens is that the consequences are very negative. 
So instead of working on something that is important for us, we, we find ourselves doing trivial activities, basically, that has nothing to do with our development, with our growth, and with, with, us, with, with us moving forward. So it has many forms. Procrastination can be good for you only in a couple of instances. The first one is that when you know that you need to think about something from all angles or you need to brainstorm on the issue that you have in hand. The other instance that procrastination is good when you know that there are so many factors involved in what you have to do, so you need to wait about what's gonna happen or a series of events that are gonna happen and will unfold for you. But just to let you know, and this is something that I, not only I learned personally in my life, but I also, I studied it in psychology. It says that the minute your procrastination or putting your stuff on the back burner will start affect your productivity, then that's a red alert telling you, you know what, stop here. You need to start doing something about it. So people have that idea is like if I manage my time better or if I put something on my calendar or if I have a to-do list or if I list things together or this is going to solve my procrastination problem. And I have news for you, for you. Procrastination has nothing to do with time management. It has nothing to do with time. And we think that time management is about managing time you know, in our life. And actually time management, that's the wrong definition. Time management mean, means that we manage ourselves around the time, not the other way around. So I know a lot of people, and I used to say that a lot, by the way, when I was a lot younger, I said, you know what? I work better under pressure. So I rather leave everything till the last minute. And when I know I'm, I'm like basically squeezed in a corner, this is what I'm gonna do my best results. I think better when I'm under pressure. And we all know that it's not true. We all know that actually when we, when we push things in the back, when we start saying, you know what, I wanna do this at the end, um, we need to manage ourselves around time not to manage time. So it's, it's not about uh, like just we need better pressure so we can go ahead and I have a deadline that I have to perform, but actually procrastination, believe it or not, it's a coping mechanism that our brain invented to keep us in a comfort zone. Because like we always say, the brain first function is to protect us against any danger that it sees coming either that danger is real or perceived. So in order for us that our brain keeps us safe in that comfort zone, we get procrastination. So it's a coping mechanism that might work well in short term. It gives us like a good result of feeling good, but it's a disaster on the long run. So that's how we have to start thinking about it as we go in the presentation today. So I'm going to share some personal stuff about procrastination. Whenever I start a new project, you know, and I know it's a big project, I start some, I used to spend days like getting together papers and, and, and pens and markers and highlighters and, and rulers and uh, like uh, white papers that I write on. And I spent two, three, uh, two, three days just doing that without really getting anything done. And then, you know, I, I start doing stuff and, and all of a sudden I remember, oh, because as, as you know, I work from home. Yes, I have my office like you see here at the back of the house, but I work from home. So all of a sudden, oh, you know what? I needed to put some water in the fridge or I needed to do the bed or maybe I need to vacuum now, which I don't really do much, but I, it just like all of a sudden I need to do all that stuff. All that is part of procrastination, but in my head, I'm explaining it that it's something urgent that, oh, I cannot leave the dishes in the sink, for example. And then all of a sudden, it's 1 or 2 p.m. And I'm like, huh, you know what? I have only three hours till the end of the day, working day. You know what? It's not much to do, so maybe I'll just leave it till tomorrow. And, and one of the things that I learned now, like be, right before this webinar, I had like 20 minutes. 
you know what I used to say, you know what, I'm just gonna just sit around and, and wait. You know, now I find things or I start things to do in this 20 minutes or even 10 minutes. When I decided to write a book and I, I and okay, I'm gonna read this. When I decided to write a book, for years, I think since 2015, I started saying, you know what, I'm gonna write a book. And then I start writing an idea. And they're like, nah, no one is gonna be interested. And then I start another one. And then I start another one. I'm not kidding you. I must have started seven different ideas. And then I would say, no, 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 no. I'm really busy now. And let me make the money in whatever work I have. A book can be done next month. And the, the week went to months, went to years. And then in 2017, I had it on my vision board, right in the center of my vision board. And I said, I don't care what it is, I'm gonna write my book today. I mean, this year. So it was, I think, June. And I said, my deadline is my birthday. My birthday is in October. And believe it or not, I had everything I needed for my book. I, have, I had all the information I needed. I, I had it in chapters and everything, but I never put it together. So, Every single day, I said, I will take an hour in the morning. I will wake up one hour earlier than every single day, and I will do something about it. On my birthday, on 2017, my book was released. But my procrastination kept me from doing it for years before that. Because, and we're going to know why, but, but right now we are talking about what is procrastination. So there is a big threat of procrastination. We, for example, we keep delaying, it's not only doing the tasks, but we keep saving, we, we keep delaying saving money for our retirement. Oh, you know what? I'm still young. I need the money for this. I need the money for my kids' education. I need the money maybe to change a car. I need the money to do this. So, you know what? Let me save a little bit more of my retirement, you know, later on. Or something happens. We have a headache or we have a toothache and we keep saying, you know what, it's okay, I can take a couple of Advil rather than going to a regular checkup. You know, I myself did that for years, you know, and it's just like, we have, for example, cancer in the family, but, and I have to do mammograms every year. And whenever comes the time around that time, I keep finding all the projects and all the things that I need to do that will, will kind of like, see, I don't have the time to go and do my mammogram. So because, Sometimes we have a little pain physically, like a headache or something. We say, you know what, a couple of Advil will do. But what we don't think about is that that headache can be a symptom for something huge. It could be even signs of a tumor or something. But it just like, we keep procrastinating. So procrastination doesn't only apply in our work, but it applies in every single thing of our life. Like for example, waiting till the last time to do your taxes. And then of, uh, of course, you're going to forget things and a lot of deductions that you could have made or a lot of items that you should have put, you know, and that can basically put you into like an audit from the tax. You didn't do it or from IRS, you didn't do it because you left everything till the last minute. So procrastination can just basically go into our life in different, uh, in different ways and in different channels, and it manifests itself with different symptoms. So Professor Ferrari, that is a psychology professor, says this, the chronic procrastinator, chronic meaning that someone that does it all the time, is the person who does this as a lifestyle and would rather have other people think that they lack effort than lacking ability. So it's a maladaptive lifestyle. What does that mean? He says that people that procrastinate, most of them that are chronic procrastinators rather don't do anything. So people can say, you know what? Okay, they don't have the effort or they don't make the effort to do that rather than doing something and be judged by it. So this is why some people procrastinate. It's a fear. And we're going to go through that in details. So what procrastination, every single thing that we do that is not good for us, what I call vices, has a payoff. No matter how much we hate it. Like eating sugar, for example. Like eating stuff that tastes good, though I know it has a lot of calories. 
You know, I know in my mind that I need to lose weight and I need to stop eating the stuff or eat a little bit less of it. But I have a payoff and the payoff that instantly when I eat it, it makes me feel good. That's my payoff. So the payoff of procrastination, like I said, is protecting ourselves from doing something that is difficult that we're facing, even if it's only in our brain that it's different, it, it difficult, only if it's our perception. So it protects us from fears like fear of failure, fear of being embarrassed, fear of being judged. And we will always find an excuse why we did not finish something. Either, I mean, most of us always say that, oh, you know what? I don't have time. Rather than appearing as a failure. And I, I like most of you know, I help a lot of entrepreneurs. And when I tell them this is what you need to do to succeed, because basically being an entrepreneur is a choice and it's your paycheck. And most of them, oh, I don't have time. I don't have resources. I don't have enough support. I don't have enough uh, knowledge. You know, and all these are excuses so you can stay where you are procrastinating. So I want to remind you that miracles happen only when you step out of your comfort zone. So the cycle that procrastination starts in our brain is this. When we, this is what usually happens for most people. We start the task and we are rah, 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 yeah, I love it and I'm going to finish it and I'm going to finish it quick. And then life happens, like they say. Time passes and our enthusiastic feelings kind of become a little bit colder and they kind of like, they change. And all of a sudden, because we think it more, we start doubting ourselves, you know, or maybe I'm not going to start or finish on time. And then we get ourselves busy in other start in other stuff and we feel like you know what this thing is more important than this so this is where i'm gonna go so procrastination is a habit is to put everything on the back burner and what and we basically concentrate on what we think that what is a priority which might not be a priority so procrastination gets you in a state of paralysis and gets you stagnating or stuck where you are and some people like, I don't know if you ever heard the expression paralysis by analysis. This is kind of procrastination. When we start thinking and thinking and thinking and researching and researching on one specific task and we say, till I have all the information at hand that I can get and I cannot move forward. And this is actually part of procrastination. But the more it happens, you know, this is the other side, the bad side of procrastination, that the more it happens, the more feelings of guilt and shame that we didn't do something that we were supposed to do that, that gets into us and it starts pulling us into the rabbit hole. The logical excuses that we form in our brain is, is like, for example, oh, you know what? I wish I could do it, but it's, it's not me. It's, it's the other things that are more important. It's uh, my child project, or it's uh, uh, taking care of an IRS problem. Or, so we always have the logical excuses. And when we have that excuse, it kind of balances in our brain the guilt that basically I don't have a choice. You know, I'm, I'm a victim here. So we either fall down into the inaction or we choose to push forward. And when we push forward, the feelings of guilt basically and shame just stop. And I want you to know that procrastination, part of it is people looking for perfection. And perfection by definition means that you need to release something to perfect it. You cannot perfect something before you release it. But perfection actually acts against us because why? We have that little voice in our ears that always says that, you know what? You're not there yet. You haven't done enough. There is more to do. And we question every single step that, you know what? And I'm like, maybe I'm not good enough at that. Maybe I should try harder because we are scared or we are worried that others will, ju will judge us. But I want you to know perfection will sabotage your creativity and will harm your success and will put you in a tunnel vision. Because when you put perfection, you are expecting very high expectations of yourself. 
that are sometimes unachievable. So you paralyze yourself by doing that. And you put a rigid set of rules and you actually can damage your self-esteem. Like a self of self-defeating rules that you put in yourself. I want you to know that perfection is rooted in procrastination and procrastination is rooted in fear. So why? Why do we procrastinate? Because, like I said, it's rooted in fear. So it starts and ends in fear. The fear that we can control our emotions basically makes us feel overwhelmed and stressed. You know, and, and we try when we get into a task and we start doing something and we start like doubting if we're going to do it or not, what it will do is that it overwhelms us and stress us. And that's what our brain is trying to avoid. That's why it pushes us into procrastination. And I want you to know that the fear is the silent killer of all your dreams if you let it thrive. Fear will kill your dreams, will kill your goals, and will kill your success. Fear is fake elements appearing real. So they're not really there. And that's why we need to look at it in the eye. How do we do that? It, like fear comes in, in, in many shapes of form. We have probably 150 kind of fears because we are intimidated or by a task or we feel tired. And instead of doing what we need to do, we go to something that makes us feel good. For example, like my, 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 uh, um, my pet peeve is watching housewives, you know? So when I, when I get like overwhelmed and stressed, I'm like, okay, I'm going to relax. I'm going to watch just an episode of uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta or Beverly Hills or Orange County, whatever it is, whatever is, is running at that time from my DVR. And I find myself, instead of watching one, I'm like, oh my God, there is another one from Beverly Hills. Let me watch it. And that's how it goes. Or... I look at my phone and I start being going into the rabbit hole of looking at my Instagram, looking at my Facebook and connecting with people, you know, or I say, you know what? I haven't played with my dogs enough today. So let me start playing with them. Thinking that when we do that, it makes us feel better. But I have news for you because we don't do what we are supposed to do. It makes us actually feel worse because again, it's fear. Part of the fear and why we procrastinate is sometimes we don't know where to start. And because we have a task that we might not be very efficient enough to do it or know everything about it, we feel tired or overwhelmed and we start doubting our skills and our resources. Or we don't put clear deadlines. Or like I said, we have a failure, uh, fear of failure or success. There is something called fear of success that Oh my God, if I'm succeed, if I'm going to succeed, what happens is that people think that it got to my head. People are going to think that I'm not good enough anymore to be uh, socially vulnerable with them. People are going to think that I think myself um, almighty, or people think that money is going to change me, or people think that money is not good. So when someone has it a lot, they, they become very greedy. And believe it or not, when people have that fear of success, it holds them back. And it's only a fear. The only thing that you need to fear is fear, but there is nothing else to fear because it's only in your brain. Again, fake elements appealing real. Negative thoughts are gonna start into your brain. It will take off your self-identity and will actually impact your ability. I'm seeing a lot of stuff going to the uh, chat. I'm gonna do it as soon as we finish this. Uh, how? So how do we... Uh, overcome procrastination. So I have a lot of tools, but because I know that we have uh, only one hour to discuss this, I'm going to discuss five of them. And one of the things that I, I want you to think about is how to use procrastination in a positive way. What does that mean? Like, because I'm aware that I do procrastinate from time to time, what I do is when I get overwhelmed with procrastination and I realize that I'm procrastinating, I use it to my benefit. So for example, if I wanted to do filing, I had a lot of papers or I had a lot of files either physically on my desk or on my computer, I will take the time that basically do brainless activities 
and start doing the filing. If I needed to clean my desk, this is the time when I do it. If I wanted to um, make sure that my necklaces are in the uh, proper boxes with the right labels, you know, organizing something, basically try to do something that doesn't take a lot of brain power. Because believe it or not, our brain shies away from doing something in two cases. One, it wants to save energy or what we call save calories. And when it wants to save energy, it will not let you go into something that is new ter ter territory for you that will claim a lot of your energy and of your brain power. So it will pull you back basically in your comfort zone. The second thing is that like our brain is for survival. And when we, have, when we are confronted with something that is new, we get that feeling that it's danger and that's why our brain recoils. And fortunately, our brain never changed since the caveman. Like I always say, it's fight, flight, or freeze. And procrastination is the part of freeze. This is our primal reaction to anything that comes to our life. Because since the caveman, we are still living in that fear of danger that either someone is going to kill us or take our resources or take, take our people away. And we still go through that. So let's talk a little bit. Like I'm going to give you five, the five easiest tools to use on how to overcome procrastination. The first one is face your challenge, meaning when you have a task that scares you or you feel like, oh my God, it's, it's, it's big, don't stop doing it. Because your best tool is your self-awareness. This is what I was just trying to explain about myself right now. Like for example, when I started my business uh, end of 2011, the first nine months, I kept telling myself, I'm gonna, Okay, whenever anyone asks me what is it that you do, you know, that's how basically everybody identifies you, right? So what is it that you do? So I would say I'm starting a business. I'm starting a business for nine months because for nine months I would like say, I want the perfect business card. I want the perfect stationery. I want the perfect vision and mission statement. I want the perfect desk and I wanted the perfect desk and I want a perfect website. And, and I was looking for that perfection that I was talking about. And then after nine months, you know, my husband that is my partner and my rock and my support said, told me, Sahar, why do you keep telling people you're starting a business? You have a business, act like it. And that's all I needed to get me into gear. And I started thinking, it's like, oh my God, I'm doing exactly what I'm telling people not to do. You know, to pro I was looking for perfection and perfection, people, does not exist. There is no perfection in life, okay? We can thrive to excellence, but perfection does not exist. Perfection is basically a little jail cell that we put ourselves inside. And because of that, you know, we don't have to move forward because I'm still looking for perfection and I didn't get it. Because guess what? You're not going to get it. So that's the excuse that it's always there, but excellence is beautiful. And that's what I'm saying. We have, and I started thinking, you know, analyzing what's making me stop here. And my emotional intelligence started get kicking in. And as we know, the first part of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So your self-awareness is the best tool. Acknowledging that you have an issue, you are halfway through to heal it, to deal with it, to eliminate it, or to minimize it. So the solution is this. Learn more. If you don't know much about emotional intelligence, learn more about it. I would ask you to journal everything. Journal your dream, your goals, your distractions. When they happen, what triggers your distraction? You know, because trigger, we will get distracted always because something triggered us to be distracted. So self-awareness will help us kind of know or pinpoint what really triggered. Like what we did we do kid, 
like, like what helped us move from A to B. Journal it down and also write the feelings that comes with that before the distraction and after the distraction. And then look at it at the end of the week. And why do we write things and not just think about it? Because the minute you write something and your eyes see it, it detaches yourself, itself from your brain and you become an observer to what's going on rather, rather than being part of it. And when you become an observer, you can make a better, intelligent and smarter decision. Because you become an observer, you are not attached to that. You don't have your self-identity attached to that. When you write it down, it detaches itself from your brain and you, like I said, you become like an observer from the outside. Like what would you do or what would you say to a friend? That's what writing does to you. So number two, look at the root of the problem and name it. Like I said, claim it and name it. So no band-aid. Procrastination with a band-aid is not going to happen. So next time you catch yourself going through your IG feed or, watch, or your Instagram feed or watching TV instead of working to your task, make, look at that. I mean, try to observe it, like I said. Don't analyze it. Don't say, oh my God, it's so bad. I need to kick myself in, be, in the behind. Don't do that. Don't analyze it. Don't judge yourself. Actually lean into it. And by what lean into it, meaning like what you do is stop for a second and start deep breathing. Do three to five deep breathing. So how do we do deep breathing? We take in from the nose at the count of four. We hold it at the count of four. And we exhale from our mouth, our mouth at the count of eight. And when we do that, you know, we, uh, we are telling our brain to go from the primal or survivor part of it to the analytical part of it or the thinking part of it. It takes only 30 seconds to disconnect from the survival to go full thinking power. So when you do that, you bring oxygen to your brain and you reset your brain and you can actually go back to your test. And ask yourself, you know, and, and you, are the, you have to be honest because it's about only you. No one can help you with that unless you come up with the right answers or the real answers. What is it that I'm really scared of? Hmm. What scares me? And, and, and I'm going to give you a very quick tool for fear. I, care, I, I say it F to F, fear to friend. I actually, I use my fear as a window to my future. What does that mean? I look at when fear comes in, we start thinking, it, it, we panic because we see the worst case scenario that ever will happen. And that's where we go. Use that. Look at that worst case scenario and you can act towards diminishing it or removing it totally. So you actually have something that you can work towards. And whatever you do that will get you a less than the worst case scenario scenario is a win for you. And the more you do it, you will become more efficient and you will see that your fear will lessen little bit by little bit. And, and one of the things, like I said, the worst case scenario, you get there, you reset your brain, you can reset your brain through breathing or through wearing an elastic band around your wrist and just snap it. The brain is very easily distracted. So you take it from a negative state to a positive state because oxygen is the fuel to the brain. It's all connected. And that's why I started with you with what is the root of procrastination and where do we get it? So number one, self-awareness. Number two, claim it and name it and look at the root of it. The third part is start with your why. What is your why? What is your purpose? What is your reason to do the task? And why should you, you should care about it? And why start asking why and go five levels down. So you ask why you get an answer. And then you ask why for that answer. You get an, a second answer. You ask a why for the second answer. You get a third answer. You ask a why for the third answer, you get a fourth answer, and so on till at least 
five degrees down. What is your purpose? You know, what is, why you're doing this? We, are, we all are doing something because specifically those of us that are entrepreneurs, we are doing something because it, 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 it satisfies a fulfillment inside ourselves. And if we don't know our why, we will be kind of lost. So our purpose, like it's the legacy that we want to leave before? Is it because I'm impacting people? Is it because I want to give a better life to my family? What is it? What is your why? And only when you get in touch with your why that you get clarity. And when you get clarity, you know, you know that you need to do this task, you know what, rain or shine, or shine or rain, whatever it is. Because you know why you have to do it. Write your ideas down. I, I would, you would always hear me say, write everything down. When we know our purpose and the impact that we can make, it will actually give us that propelling forward for us to do the things that we need to do. So number four, break down the big tasks into smaller tasks. Because sometimes when we are uh, faced with a big task, we feel overwhelmed. And that's one of the reasons of procrastination. So when we are faced with a big, big task, what we do is we have to tendency to avoid it. So what I do, I say, okay, I'm just going to do 10 minutes of this. Who cannot afford a 10 minutes? I call it the 10 minutes rule. So I sit down in 10 minutes and I finish something and I'm like, okay, I did it. So maybe I can add 10 more minutes and, and so far. And then you get into that flow because 10 minutes, is not threatening to you. You're not gonna think, oh, the task is so big that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna waste my whole day. But if you tell your brain, you make a deal with your brain that I'm just gonna take 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's it. 10 minutes is not threatening at all. You can give yourself 10 minutes, you can give someone else 10 minutes without really wasting a full morning or an afternoon. And once you are in the flow, you will see that you're just gonna continue doing stuff but make sure to to kind of divide the big task into shorter tasks and focus about them. the last one this is my favorite one i call it eat the frog that's why i had a frog in the beginning hey, so Sahar, Martin, sorry yeah uh i just wanted to clarify i think i know but you're gonna send this out to everybody because they wanted you to go back to like a subplot uh, they missed their notes of one yeah, of the slides. That's all. Handwriting stuff. Because you're going to send it out? It? I'm, I'm going to have the video of it. Yeah, I'm recording it. I just wanted okay. to clarify. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. I'll go back, though, Asia. I'll go back to the slide that you want me to go back. Let me, this is the last, the last okay. solution. I'll go back to it. So, eat the frog. Mark Twain said, if you have to eat a live frog, it doesn't pay to sit and look at it for a very long time. Logic, right? So what does that mean? What does eat the frog mean? Let's assume or let's imagine that the frog is the ugly task or the difficult task that you need to do. So the first thing that you do in the morning is to eat the frog, meaning you attack the most difficult task. You do it and guess what? Your whole day is free after that. You don't have to keep thinking the whole day. It's like, oh my God, I have to do this. Oh my God, I have to do this. And once you do that, you are going into channels of thinking that are taking you away from concentrating in what you do. So not only you procrastinate, but you're also jeopardizing your whole day. So eat the frog in the morning. And what if you have two frogs? Start with the ugliest. So that's a visual for you so you won't forget. Meaning, start with the ugliest, meaning start with the task that you feel is more difficult or is more overwhelming to you. So eat the frog in the morning. And one of the things, why do we do that? Because I always believe in the principle of slowing down to speed up. And some people say it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean slowing down to speed up? When you... Uh, watch this competition of swimming the swimmers that start like jump and go like really really fast in the beginning they're not the winners the winners are the ones that go efficiently and gaining speed as they go 
meaning that in the beginning you slow down to gather all information to have the right environment to have everything you need to start so you don't have to be distracted so you need to slow down so later on you speed up in whatever you do so i want you now to get out and conquer the word one task one step one goal one dream at a time and never get into that ugly web of the seed that is called procrastination uh, like I said, I have uh, a program online for uh, procrastination. It's a three modules. It's a mini course. If anyone is interested, let me know. I can send you uh, the link uh, for it that I have on Kajabi that 